Hello and welcome to my channel. In this channel, we explain various nursing concepts in a simple form for better and easy understanding. These videos could be used by both LPN and RN students as well as nurses who are trying to refresh their basic concepts. My name is Nas Mosh. So in this video, we're going to talk about the various ways to deliver oxygen. We're going to talk about signs and symptoms of hypoxemia as well as respiratory emergencies. So oxygen delivery. There are various devices to deliver oxygen. So let's start with the first one, our nasal cannula. We all know the nasal cannula. The nasal cannula delivers between one to six liters per minute of oxygen if the patient requires four liters per minute or more we always have the patient on humidificated oxygen just to prevent the drying so for simple face mask that delivers between five to eight liters per minute of oxygen a partial rebreather mask delivers between six to eleven liters per minute of oxygen and we always adjust the oxygen floor to keep the reservoir bag the reserve bag from deflating for a non rebreather mask we deliver between 10 to 15 liters per minute and we always keep the reservoir bag uh, two-thirds full and we always assess the valve and flap hourly for a venturi mask a venturi mask delivers between four to ten liters per minute and it provides the most precise oxygen delivery so if they ask you which one is the most precise it's always the venturi mask and the aerosol mask or a festant mask this when we we're talking about bands this is actually used for patients who have like facial bands and trauma and it provides high humidification for this patients so let's get into signs and symptoms of hypoxemia so early signs of hypoxemia involves restlessness irritability tachypnea tachycardia pale skin hypertension nasal flaring use of accessory muscle and advantageous sounds because remember we are trying to compensate that low oxygen level and after some time the body gets tired so what happens the patient goes synodic they end up being hypertensive they have dysrhythmias they could end up with bloody penia as well as cyanosis and signs and symptoms for oxygen toxicity remember we can always have oxygen toxicity when we over deliver this oxygen to this patient it's also good to know it could be a non-productive cough we are trying to control it they could have some nasal congestion as well as nausea and vomiting headache and sore throat so let's get into respiratory emergencies this is a big thing and one of the big thing is a pulmonary embolism this is actually a life-threatening blockage in the pulmonary vasculature the most cause of this is a dvt some risk factors for this will be immobility that's when patients have surgery we gotta move them right we gotta move them oral contraceptives is also a risk factor as well as smoking obesity afib why because the fluttering of the afib can cause it's not completely entering it can end up with a blood clot surgery and long bone fractures and with long bone fractures is not actually a clot is normally a fat embolism some signs and symptoms of a PE include anxiety. The patient will say, oh, they'll report a feeling of doom. There'll be pain with inspiration. Inspiration is breathing in, bring in the air. They'll have dyspnea, pleural friction rub, tachycardia, tachypnea, hypertension, petechia, which are red dots, and diaphoresis. Okay, so the patient is trying to compensate for that blockage. Diagnosis for this will always do like a CT scan, a DEMA lab test, and the expected uh, result for a DEMA lab test will be under 0 0.4 milligrams per milliliter and if it's over 0 0.4 it's indicative of a blood clot presence meds will give them some anticoagulants heparin warfarin thrombolytic therapy and with anticoagulants they actually thin the blood to prevent new clots from forming they thin the blood they don't 
bust the clots. And what busts the clots or break up the clots? The thrombolytic agents. We'll also have some surgical interventions like the removal of the clot or even place of a filter. And our nursing care for this patient will always place this patient on a high fallers position and always administer oxygen as prescribed. The first thing with a patient you suspect they have a pulmonary embolism, give them that oxygen. And we'll teach this patient about the warfarin they're taking. The INR levels are between two to three. We'll maintain a consistent, they need to maintain a consistent intake of vitamin K for warfarin. Why? Because vitamin K is the antidote for warfarin. We encourage them to stop smoking because it's a risk factor. They should increase their mobility and they should wear compressive stockings, right? DVT to increase that circulation. And we advise them on the risk for bleeding. They need to not use, avoid aspirin. They need to use electrical shavers and soft toothbrushes as well as avoiding blowing their nose so hard. Other respiratory emergency include a pneumothorax. And what is a pneumothorax? The lung collapses due to air in the pleural space. Remember, the lung is a negative pressure kind of situation. And signs and symptoms for these will be hyperresonance with percussion. Tension pneumothorax. This is with the tension pneumothorax. The air will enter the pleural space during inspiration and cannot exit during expiration. And signs and symptoms of this will be a tracheal diversion, hemothorax, hemo, blood. So this will be blood accumulating in the pleural space and signs and symptoms of this will be a dull percussion. Hyper resonance with the pneumothorax, it's air. Air is lighter than blood. So blood, you will feel the, you know, it will sound thicker, like a stronger sound. With a frail chest, a frail chest wall expansion is limited due to multiple fractured ribs so somebody who has multiple fractured ribs they'll end up with a frail chest their lungs are not ex expanding and they will have this paradoxical chest wall movement which is normally known as or you could see it's asymmetrical some common signs and symptoms of all this respiratory emergency pneumothorax a pe tension pneumothorax hemothorax and frail chest include all of them, they'll have a respiratory distress issue. They'll have reduced or absence of breath sounds on the affected side, right? Whichever lung that is collapsed, whichever lung that is not expanding, or whichever lung that is blocked or wherever the clot is, you're not going to hear any breath sounds. And the treatment for all this respiratory emergency, as I said, is always oxygen therapy as ordered. We know to give them like benzodiazepines. And what does benzodiazepine mean? To reduce anxiety. And when we reduce anxiety, we re reduce the oxygen demand to help them breathe slowly. Opioids for pain and with pneumothorax or hemothorax, we need to insert a drain with a chest tube. So we'll talk about chest tube and positioning in our next video. Thank you for watching. Please like, share and subscribe to my channel. See you on the next one. Bye.